We'll be doing a fire cast and I'll be like, why did we name that parameter like six words squished together? And now I have to keep saying it. <laughs> hey, all you Firebase developers. Welcome to another episode of Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. I'm Jen Person, host of the show. And today I'm joined by my co-host, Rachel Saunders. Hey, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. So what do you do for Firebase? Well, I'm actually new to Firebase, and I am... Welcome. Thank you. And I'm a technical writer. Um, so whenever there's a new product or a new feature, I learn about that feature, and I run the workflows, and I make sure everything kind of fits okay with what to do with, um, with that feature. And I write about it so that all of you guys can actually use it. Yeah, it's such an important role to Firebase because if you just have this product sitting there, but no description of what it does <laughs> or how to use it, it's uh, useless. And I know you already work on our one resource to make them uh, to be helpful to our developers. Let's let's do another one. Let's answer some questions about Firebase. Yeah, definitely. This question comes to us from Wender Patrick, who wants to know, using the restaurants review example, can I use cloud functions to automatically denormalize this data when there's an update to some user? Uh, what this user is referring to is a video that Todd made on Cloud Firestore, which we'll link below, that's talking about collections of restaurants and reviews. So he wants to know, can we use uh, denormalization for that? Um, yeah, definitely. And he's specifically asking about like cloud functions. Can I use a cloud function for that? And you definitely can. Um, you can write a cloud function that's triggered by a change in your Cloud Firestore. Um, like in your example, uh, a user makes an update in their username. When that update is made, it triggers a, a cloud function and it um, updates in all of their reviews and across the database. So your cloud function will access and perform these update actions in the Cloud Firestore through the Firebase admin SDK. Mm -hmm. So you'll need to install a couple packages and then before you write your cloud function. Yeah, um, and so fortunately we have a code lab that shows how to yes. do this, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll link to that below where you can see a specific example of uh, using cloud functions to denormalize data. So when you make an update in one place, uh, the cloud function can handle doing that update everywhere else. Yeah, that's really handy. Our next question comes from Henry. Thank you so much for all of your questions. You're always asking us great questions. Should chat messages be appended to an array or as individual documents in a sub collection in Firestore? So this depends on the needs of your app. Um, but generally, it's better to store as documents in a collection rather than as an array. Um, it's just easier to determine if a given value exists, and it's easier to make changes. And then once you have your data structured, you can easily make that subcollection of documents into an array, but client side. Right. Um, I agree. So you can definitely do it either way. Mm -hmm. And it's true that there may be situations where it makes more sense to use an array. But in general, I just think documents are better because Going forward, thinking about what your app might need, it's great to be able to uh, know that you can query by any of the fields you put in there. It's going to be easier to add fields to your documents. And you had brought up earlier today that you can now query um, arrays where some to look for something that exists in it, which is a great step. But you can just still you just have more power with uh, documents than with arrays. Yeah. So that's my opinion, though. But keep that in mind, <laughs> right? Okay. This one's. Yes, this one's also for me. So the next person asks, is there a way to update security rules for real-time database or for Cloud Firestore um, from Cloud Functions? So again, another Cloud Functions related to the different services we have. Um, imagine I have multiple message boards dynamically created, and I want only some members to have right access. That's a great question. And uh, the short answer is no. But it is certainly possible to restrict things dynamically. So one way you could handle this is by having, um, let's say, a collection of documents with um, where it basically just says permissions. So maybe the document ID could be that user's UID, and then mm -hmm. it sort of lists what permissions they have. So message board one, true. Uh, message board three, true. It, under each user, it would say what they are allowed to access. Then in your rules, you would basically have a section that's like, um, let's say document that's a collection message boards and then message board ID. Mm -hmm. And then you could restrict um, based on whether someone has that specific uh, value in their options for like what I'm allowed to access. And 
There's a lot of words I just said. So uh, I think this calls for another example. And this is actually something yeah. that I'm going to be uh, talking about in a fire cast. Um, so if that's out oh. now, I will link to it. Otherwise, stay tuned because it's going to come out. I'm going to talk about how you can handle these sort of permissions. So while you can't dynamically create new rules, theoretically, the rules don't really change in this case mm -hmm. because you want to restrict access so that only specific users can reach certain message boards. So you can do that by saying, look up, are they on this list of people that are allowed to access it? Mm. You also have the option to use custom auth claims, but because you are limited in how many claims you can put on a specific user, um, I would only recommend that if you have a couple different um, types of data permissions. So if you need to be able to have people have unlimited different combinations of message boards that they can be a part of, then that wouldn't be the best option. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're not familiar with custom claims, I'll link to that too. So is there a specific like error that you see people commonly make in their writing that just like drives you crazy? In their writing, like from like the original source material from our, um, like our Swedes and things like that? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes they make it um, a little bit difficult to like, uh, like run the workflow. Like they leave out um, like an important step. They just kind of do it themselves and so they don't even write it down. And so it's a missing piece of the workflow. And so for especially like beginner users, it sometimes every single step needs to be laid out really clearly. So um, making sure that we run the workflow and kind of document, truly document what the workflow is, is really, is really handy and really important for our developers. Yeah, definitely. That's so true. It, we're so close to the products that mm -hmm. we work with that it is really easy to just get so used to doing things a certain way that you don't you lose that first experience. Right. What the, what's that like from being the original original user? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, our beginners are, are just anyone who's like not familiar, even to just a new service that Firebase offers. Sometimes we need to make sure that they're kind of like don't assume that they've used all the other Firebase services, which you should. But <laughs> <laughs> but you know they don't always have everything set up, and so you kind of make you you don't want to make assumptions about anyone out there. So good point. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Rachel, and helping me answer these questions. Oh, it was great. It's always nice to be able to see how all these different pieces fit together. So. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. And I always learn so much from people's questions. Um, these are things that I don't necessarily think of until someone asks. Yeah. So thank all of you who submitted questions and continue to submit questions. And when you come across something and you think it might be a good fit for the show, be sure to hit it with the hashtag AskFirebase. And who knows, maybe you'll see it here on a future episode. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel so you can check out all of the content that comes out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on a future episode. I was first worried that I would clash with the color scheme, so I made sure to pick a non-color on here. It's very modern, isn't it? With the lines and everything.